Hello folks, it's time for our truck update. Alrighty, so trucker time, also known as our Triton Missile Mitsubishi L200 EV conversion project. Uh, quick update um, for you folks who may not have been following along on our last trip in truck land, we took the bed off and we got our 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf battery uh, securely mounted in here. And uh, we got our little tunnel carved into the base of the cab there for bringing our cables in, which we now have prepared. Uh, we got rid of the fuel system and the exhaust system, so it now sounds mean. And we have a boat tank here just to provide some fuel for moving the vehicle around. So we're now finally um, getting very near the point. We're going to be ripping this thing out and putting our uh, Nissan Leaf drivetrain in here. Now to that end, I've been working on the adapter plate and the coupler uh, with our kind of... Um, guess you'd call this mock-up gearbox here so this is our adapter plate made from six millimeter steel and that I designed in FreeCAD using a combination of photogrammetry and measurements and all that and once we get this um, fully working I'll make that uh, drawing available for anyone who may have designs on a similar uh, build so You'll also notice this adapter plate is a little bit different uh, from our previous um, variants in that there's a big honking bearing here that's um, got our coupler sitting in it. So why is that? Well, the reason for that, folks, is that we're going to be using our leaf, our full leaf stack here. So the full drivetrain motor, inverter, and a 6.6 kilowatt PDM in our conversion. And obviously the, the full battery in there as well. So it'll be quite a, a leaf-centric uh, conversion project. Now you'll notice that we have not one, uh, but two of these here. The second one is from our donor 2015. This is the 80 kilowatt system, uh, which will be for the plastic pans, or it'll be coming at a later date. But you'll observe that they've both got these kind of snouts sticking out of the front of the motor here. And the reason is, again, that both of these projects will be using the full uh, leaf stack in them. And one of the uh, problems that we have when doing that is that if we do a side view here of our leaf stack, trying to get you lined up, you're going to notice here that this PDM hangs out quite a bit over the face of the motor so you can trace my finger there from the motor face all the way out to the front and in order to get around that we need to make a little kind of a longer adapter system uh, than we would traditionally do uh, with a motor to gearbox adapter plate setup so what we have here is we have some six millimeter steel um on the leaf motor and some 200 millimeter by six pipe and that's cut to 150 so the total distance here allowing for 12 mil for the the two pieces of steel and the pipe will be 162 millimeters that we have to push back so face to face so in terms of from the leaf motor face to the gearbox face will be 162 millimeters and that then allows us uh, to have the front of the PDM. This is the PDM we'll be using in the L200 project. And this one in the plastic Panzer. It allows these guys to clear the firewall. And lets us use the full stack. Now the challenge there is when we have a long adapter, we need a long coupler. And with a long coupler, 
obviously the ability for it to wobble around vastly increases. Uh, traditionally, even when I've done rear wheel drive gearboxes, um, like you've got a spacing of maybe 20, 25 mil in your total adapter plate and your motor shafts, uh, or your, sorry, your motor shaft and gearbox shaft are brought right in close. So the coupler is quite a small affair and uh, you can support the gearbox input from the motor front uh, bearing without any problems. Now that brings us to our longer coupler. So in order to avoid a problem whereby the coupler would be inclined to bounce because the splines are not you know, super tight either on the gearbox clutch spline end or on the motor end we need to put an intermediate bearing in there. So that's what that big honking block is uh, that we see bolted onto the um, gearbox end adapter plate. Now, that does something else for us as well, which is equally important with this project, because I can tell you one thing, folks. I am not taking that gearbox out of that truck. So we're going to be pulling the engine out, leaving the gearbox in there, and then having our system motor and coupler and adapter plate ready to just drop in and slide up and bolt up to the existing gearbox. Because that gearbox is flipping heavy. And it's awkward and it's just not coming out full stop because I work on my own 99% of the time. And to do that um, by myself would be it wouldn't be pleasant. So what that lets me do is it lets me use my mock-up gearbox to get my gearbox side done and then I can join that up to the motor side and then we're going to be able to hopefully uh, bring the whole thing together. So we're going to show you a little bit of that in today's fun packed episode. Okay so having a, a closer look here you'll see what we've got is we've got our gearbox this is one i got really cheap i don't know if there's something wrong with it or not um but it's the same gearbox as that's in this truck and it's ideal here because i can monkey around with it um in terms of the bell housing comes off so i was able to use that for helping with designing the adapter plate etc so we've got our um plate bolted on we've our bearing block bolted to the back of the plate and our uh, coupler is basically shoved in through the bearing block and is now, um, I'll get you some extra light in there so hopefully you'll be able to see it. Um, our coupler now is running and turning the gearbox and you can see our drive shaft stubs there are turning away merrily. So the next phase of this operation then would be to bring our motor um, end of things in here and sit them up against this and basically tack weld it and so on in there but again because we have the intermediate bearing in here this enables us to kind of do it in a little bit more stages so we got this guy here we can now unbolt that adapter plate off here with our bearing and shaft in position bring this guy in and tack this up to our motor system um, the motor end I should say and then see how things fit together after that but it just makes life a lot easier for us and because this is a heavy duty application as well and it is the 110 kilowatt uh, motor that we're putting in I just feel that doing it this way with that extra bearing in there uh, will lead us to have a better outcome hopefully all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to strip down this stack so we've just the motor and then I'll be able to uh, turn the motor up and sit it on its back so that the uh, adapter face is turned upwards for us. All right, so I've taken off the PDM and the inverter, left them out in the truck keep them out of harm's way with our motor now sitting on its back facing upwards we've taken the adapter plate off the uh, gearbox so we're going to sit it on here now with the coupler 
Now, what should have happened is it should bottom out on this um, tube here, but I don't think it will. I think we're a little bit too short on this tube, but that is something uh, that we can cure. So let's see what happens. Now we have to get it into, there we go, the right position, which is there. Now obviously we can turn, no problems there, and a good enough, uh, say, oh it does actually, I tell a lie folks, I thought I'd, thought I'd gomed up. Now, <clears throat> One problem that we are going to have is, with this setup, is I need to make sure, because that cut on that pipe may not be 100% square. So just because we have this sitting here, I'm going to have to square this up with a measuring tape and make certain um, that we don't have any problems that way. But, first look, it doesn't actually look too bad at all. Um, Looks like I will have to cut another little notch out of the tube there. Just because this part of the plate here should be level with the motor and it needs to come this way a bit. So I need to notch the tube again another little bit. Uh, not a major job. It'll just let us twist that part of the plate around. And uh, yeah, we're not looking too bad. Not too bad at all. Alright folks, hopefully this will make a bit of sense. So what we have going on here is I'm a bit of a moron. Um, cause this bit of pipe, as I said, was just uh, cut off at a local engineering shop just on a bandsaw. Of course what I should have done was had them turn it on a large lathe and parallel the two ends, but I didn't do that. So what that meant is that when I just flopped this plate down here, there was about 5 millimeter. Uh, difference in the uh, parallel of the gearbox side plate to the uh, motor side. So what I've done is put some pieces of treaded rod in here and that with nuts on the back and that lets me kind of adjust the position and the, the kind of sway of the plate if that makes sense. So I've done that, got it pretty much where I want it to be and I made another uh, piece of bar just with a nut on it it's a kind of a measuring rod, so I can kind of sit that in there, tighten the nut down until we're just touching below, and then go around and make sure that we're um, doing the same thing um, in, say, four corners anyway, and then adjust the nuts here on the back until we get that guy pretty good. So once I've that pretty good, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two tack welds on, uh, probably from here and here, and that'll let me then adjust it a little bit this way, just with a tap, uh, if I wish to do so. And it should get us pretty much uh, spot on to where we need to be, um, so that we can then take this guy off the motor and do some more seams on him. But we'll cover that uh, later on. What we're doing now is more just kind of lining up and making sure that everything is, you know, pretty much running as we want it to. And that that surface there is there or thereabouts um, parallel to the top of the motor uh, here. So that, um, yeah, so that we're in good shape. So I'm just going around, I'm not going to bore you folks to tears with this. It's just adjusting the bar um, until we're touching and then going around and saying yeah that's touched there that one's a little oh, yeah he's touching over there and then this guy over here is touching as well so that's pretty much where i want it to be i'm going to get a tack on and we'll come back then and see where we're at all righty folks i got a few tacks in there we are looking pretty darn good. We're easily within a millimeter, um, I would say, of parallel. Not going to put any more heat into this, just wanted to get a couple tacks on there. Uh, we'll let it cool down, take our treaded bars out, 
and um, yeah then we should be able to kind of see um, should be able to kind of see where we're at and hopefully we're in a pretty good place with this thing alrighty so just taking the treaded bars out so keeping in mind we've only got four tacks on this at the minute but if we put our angle finder on running parallel roughly here to this we get 1.1 degrees up on the left side we take it and slap it up on top of the shaft we get 0.9 degrees up on the left so this plane on the plate to that plane on the shaft there is only about 0.1 of a degree difference between that and if we go that way so we get 0.5 degrees down that way and sit it on there and we get uh, pretty much what do we get zero degrees so we've got about a half a degree out on that side so i'm happy enough with that folks i think that's gonna do the job for us obviously when we're welding this up we don't just do a big seam around the whole thing because it'll warp the crap out of it um but we'll cover that uh next but yeah quite happy so far so good no tight spots motor feels very normal um just turning that guy by hand there okay folks so this is where we're at here now uh i went ahead and took the bell housing off our uh donor gearbox let's say and i have that bolted on to our adapter plate and i can look down through the um, input shaft guide and bearing seal there and we can see that we're spot on right down into our coupler and i made up a little kind of a 3d printed part that lets me just um, help to line that up and uh, we're in pretty good shape there maybe a little bit of fine tuning on this when we get it on the vehicle just to get everything in the dead center but for what we're doing now uh, this is perfect so i got this got about four or five bolts tightened up in this here so what we're going to do in a minute now is we're going to take this whole thing off the motor and sit it over here on this so this is a little workbench and i've got an aluminium version there just cut out a six millimeter aluminium um, of the leaf adapter plate and i've just got an aluminium plate then i think it's 20 mil thick um, under that so i'm going to clamp the motor side down here to this so on the motor side uh, this will help to heat sink the steel and help to pull out uh, the heat and also give it a bit of um, extra strength on the motor side and then obviously on the um, gearbox side we've got the bell housing which is allium aluminium that'll help give us some heat sinking again and also rigidity um, to hopefully keep the tendency of the plates to warp um, out of um, being too big of a problem for us so we're going to be doing that the procedure for for welding this is going to be very slow uh, so don't worry i won't bother filming it for you we're going to do basically we'll take one side we do about like 25 or 30 mil of weld on one piece we go to the diagonal 180 degree opposite do the same there leave it let it all cool down uh, flip it do the same on this side leave it let it all cool down so this will take may even take a few days if i'm perfectly honest but i would much rather um take a couple of days welding this up and have everything stay straight for me rather than rush it and have the whole thing turn into a kind of a bowler hat uh sort of a shape which uh, it would only love to do well folks good news and bad news bad news is typically we just ran out of big gas but the good news is we got a good bit of welding done 
So we got most of the welding done. Um, it's kind of hard to show you here because the light isn't the greatest. Um, we got most of our welding done. Uh, took my time. The aluminium worked great, keeping the heat out of the uh, motor side plate here as well. There's virtually no warping in that at all. And likewise here on the gearbox end. So yeah, just ran out of gas there. I'm going to have to get another bottle. Uh, to finish this off, but it's no harm anyway. It's letting everything just everything is room temperature again here now. That's what I'm letting it come down to before I do another burst. Anyway, I have had a little bit of a um, side project going on because obviously I'm only doing a few welds on this and then letting everything cool down. So good to have another job going on. So yeah, not completely unrelated to the truck project, I am making myself some uh, forks. This is um, 100 by 50 by 10 millimeter um, channel section. And we're making ourselves a pair of forks. This one will be getting cut down uh, to go on to the front of the JCB. Um, so if these guys plasma it out, um, some 45 millimeter bar going through the top mounts and then once I have them tied in I'm going to be doing plates here to add strength as if they're going to fail this is where they're going to fail we'll have to make little uh, tie downs here to go on the back of the bucket and that but yeah a couple of forks on here will uh, make things like um, lifting out engines and lifting motors and various projects which is our truck um much easier well got myself a bottle of gas which is not as tall but it's wider but still seems to have the same volume in it wasn't a complete rip off either so that was kind of nice then i went ahead and finished welding this guy up and i'm just laying on some coats of red oxide there now um just to give it a bit of uh, corrosion protection, but I'm super happy the way this turned out. There's no warping or anything in it, and the welds um, went into the metal very well. So yeah, I'll just keep laying on some of that um, paint onto that now for the rest of the evening. And uh, then that part should be theoretically good to go. On the forks project, with both of our forks now um cut the size welded up and i've cut out some of these little support pieces that go in here now for the internet goes mental and screams at me damien you're doing it wrong forklift tines are made from forged steel you cannot make them out of drawn section steel Yes, I know that. Thank you, Internet. I appreciate your concern for my safety. Uh, but we got to work with what we got. Now, on to the subject of the truck. So, weather is supposed to be pretty decent uh, next week. So we might actually, who knows, be able to get this GOM engine out of here and get that leaf stack in. Now, somebody somewhere told me i don't know whether i'm hallucinating this or whatever but they told me you can't take the engine out of these things without either lowering or removing the front differential now having replaced the front differential in this thing on my back during the winter during the rain i can absolutely assure you i will neither be removing nor lowering the front differential so if I have to get a flipping thermal lance and lance that engine out of there, then that is exactly what I'll do. But if anyone's any experience um, pulling this engine out, it's a 4D56, four cylinder, clapped out diesel engine. Uh, we're going to be doing this kind of American style in that we're going to be just taking the engine out. We're going to be leaving the gearbox because that gearbox is way too big for me to be uh, wrestling out of this thing. Yeah, there's no way in God's green earth I am, I'm going to take that thing out single-handedly. So that ain't happening. Our leaf battery, our cables inside. Um, 
So we're starting to piece the pieces together for this thing. Cables, we have our BMS harness and we have our extended uh, battery cable. I have some, um, got the 3D printer running at the minute, shorting out some clamps for this stuff for going along the truck frame. So pretty soon, yeah, pretty soon folks, we're gonna be in a good place to do this. Tom's slaving away on the uh, software and we have a VCU ready to go in. So this will obviously be adding um, control of the full leaf battery to our uh, VCU repertoire. So watch this space. I just realized something, folks. I know it's not that I'm stupid. I already knew that. Um, I, it might be a bit ironic that I'm here sweating on an autumn day uh, with the sun shining thinking about this, but... Uh, I haven't figured out how we're going to heat the truck. See, in the red arrow here, arrow that is red, using our MG uh, Lin heater thing, or the PTC heater thing. But we're going to need a coolant heater, a fluid, fluid heater thingy uh, for the truck. Now, the Leaf doesn't have one anymore. The Gen 1 does, but I don't have a Gen 1 donor car. So any thoughts on what fluid heater type thing that I might be able to use for um, the truck? Answers on a postcard. All right, so the old coupler nator is finished and bolted up to our uh, EM57 motor. It's got some red oxide, um, anti-rust paint for our favorite sp sponsor and a bit of clear coat um, on top of that just to give it a little bit of a finish so this baby is nearly ready now for installation into the truck i've just got the metal plates here that'll be going on the sides for mounting uh, just giving them a bit of uh, well true primer Got our forks finished up on the uh, JCB. So they will be getting their first actual use on our engine removal. There was a friend here yesterday, so we got the bonnet off. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to go. Just stuck it back down there on the battery. So, only other thing I did now today was I have a spare sheet of that OSB board. So I slid that in under the vehicle and make it a lot easier on my back uh, when I'm crawling around in there. So yeah, pretty much nearly ready to go here now. So folks, uh, that's about it for this episode. Uh, the truck is about to get its electric transplant finally. So in the next episode you will get to witness me extracting the old diesel engine and hopefully installing our nice uh, em57 motor and complete power stack thingy inverter and pdm and all that um, so as always as usual don't forget to give all these videos an old thumbs down. Um, don't share them. Don't subscribe to them. Whatever you do. Uh, as a final warning, don't support me on Patreon or PayPal. Then I just use your hard-earned cash on stupid projects like this. So, um, yeah, that's about it, folks. It's going to be an interesting project. It'll be our first full um, stack leaf system. Also, we have our full uh, leaf battery pack on the back here as well. So that'll be some integration, as I said, into the Zombie Verter VCU. So, I guess until next time. Happy degreaser purchasing. <laughs>